What's up guys, my name is Joseph Rosco and you're watching another episode of Bass Union. Today we're on beautiful Lake Orville and we're gonna be doing some fall bass fishing. So come along. One of the most important things in the fall when you're fishing a lake kind of like this we're in a deep clear water reservoir we're going through a transition from the summer and these fish they could be on the bank they could be out 60 70 plus feet of water a little bit of everything you can fish top water you can fish reaction baits shallow and move a lot of you know cover a lot of water you can fish slow and deep it's one of my favorite times of year actually to fish you know the the night lows are getting colder uh, you know the days are getting colder you can get the sweater out the jacket it's just uh, it, it's a fun time to fish if you guys haven't experienced it yet so a big part for me is I like to idle around and use my electronics and find fish you know in the fall they really like to school up on Lake Orville it's full of spotted bass and these things are like piranha you know they group up and they get on bait fish so the whole key is finding bait finding schools of active fish and literally dropping on them you know that's if you're wanting to fish deep if you're wanting to fish shallow just put that trolling motor on high cover all sorts of different types of banks you know cuts uh, points drop-offs you know just try it all throw top water jerk baits moving baits spinner baits Alabama rigs you know just your favorite baits to cover water with crankbaits and put that thing to work so today we're idling around see if we can find any of those high percentage spots that we can just drop on and catch a bunch of fish I want to catch those super easy ones right now it's uh, it's a lot of fun when you can sit on one spot and just bam 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 so let's see if we can find anything so first bait we got on deck throwing a bass union double buzz bait with our white painted blades and this is an unpainted head it gives them something to target so I also have a stinger hook on there in case we get any short strikes so I'm gonna use this cover a ton of water see if I can find any active fish that are willing to hit the surface so see what happens I'm really just gonna cover water down the bank and put this thing inches inches from the bank and kind of 45 and work out back towards me. Ooh, I see fish boiling out here. Gotta get them. All right, oh, I ran right on them. Come on. Ooh. Even with a stinger hook, you missed it. Had one come up and show itself. Oh, they're right below us. Like I said, these fish are they're all suspended, roaming. See if I could pick one off. A little bigger, not much bigger though. I'll take it. Get back down there. A little better. Let's put some bendo. I think smoked it on the drop. Oh yeah, a little better. That's a good one. That's a better one. Nice. That's a good one. Not bad, not bad. Best one of the day so far. It's pushing two pounds. It's a good spot for Lake Orville. This is what they're eating out there called pond smelt. Pretty good size too. There we go. Oh, that's another decent one. Come here. 
There we go. That one did a little bit better quality fish. They usually group up together. So you catch one decent one, there's usually more around. There we go. As I'm reeling it up. Ooh. This is a little better. I think. Oh yeah. Definitely. A little better. Ooh, best fish so far. And this is why I love fall time fishing right here. Come on. Got this really light Dobbins Champion 684 crankbait rod. Just letting this fish play. Got this treble hook in there. Oh, there we go. That's a two and a quarter. Good one. Solid fish. Let this fish go. You catch them out deep, the air bladder, you know, it gets really popped up. So you want to let them go back down as soon as you can. I got this light crankbait rod with 14 pound fluorocarbon and they lose hyper mag eight and a half or no 8.3 to one gear ratio so i can burn this thing back in as soon as i can when i'm done with my cast but it's uh it's been a good little setup to fight that fish takes all the just absorbs all the shock and uh so far i'm liking it i've been kind of playing with my setups back and forth was using a 784 champ extreme and uh 15 pound fluoro and that worked good but I kind of wanted something with a little bit more shock absorption when I hook these fish. Got them like spaghetti down there right now. Got the mother lug. I'm gonna get smoked first drop. She's got a little tug to her. Another good one. Definitely getting a little bit better as the day goes on. I think I'm sticking with it. Another good one. We're off to a good start. We've already probably caught 40, 50 fish. I mean, it's bites ridiculous. So if you guys aren't out here fishing Lake Orville, you need to get out here and get a line wet and catch some fish. So far, we've had a few decent ones, a few pushing to one might have been two and a quarter, I'm trying to find that little better average size fish. So we just moved to a different spot and kind of the back of this little cove see if the fish have the bait piled in back here and so far i'm seeing a lot of bait so let's put that bait down there and see what we can come up with oh there's a good one that's what i'm talking about right there nice one nice jig fish come here That's, that's a good one, boys. Two and a half, two seven. It's a good one out here right now. They just had a, a tournament. They had the Future Pro this weekend. It only took 12 pounds to win. I think top three, like there was two 11 pound bags, a few tens, and it just dropped from there. Overthrowing that, just like the last video, three quarter ounce, bass and finesse football jig. First fish with it, and it's a quality one. We've caught like 50, 40, 50 fish so far, and this is the biggest one, first jig fish. So that just goes to show you, put that jig in your hand and you have a chance to get some good ones. And I wanna give a shout out to my buddies, Jared Boom and his pops. They took first place in that tournament. It was pretty cool. I was able to go kind of cheerlead for him. I went to the weigh-in and, and saw him get the trophy. And uh, it was just, it was a really badass experience. and. Really stoked for you guys, man. So congratulations, brother. There we go. There's a good one. Another good one on the jig. Oh yeah. Now we're getting some quality, baby. Slow and steady, dragging that jig. Whoa. I was just a pressure bite. A decent one.
Yeah, I didn't even feel the tap. I just, just felt a little mushy. Got it. So good to lean into them. Another one. There we go. That's how you trigger them with a the dart head. See them down there. They're just lazy on it, falling it. So I just started popping it near the bottom. About four or five pops in. See him come up and swipe it. That'll be the starter head. It's a quarter ounce, six inch morning dawn, skinny robo worm. There's one. That was little pops. There we go. Ooh, get a little better one. God, that's so much fun. Triggering the bites. We're not just shaking this worm down there, we're popping it. Getting that darter head action. Making it go back and forth. There we go. Put on a four and a half inch robo worm. This guy got it good. I'm gonna have to get the pliers on this one extra wide gap hook that we use. Once you stick them, thing, you, you got them pinned. And there we go. Not bad. I got 10 pound braid right now, going to six pound fluorocarbon. So all I'm doing is I'm watching my line. I have this high vis braided line. So I could tell once it hits the bottom, it goes limp. And all I'm doing is just giving it small the small pops. Not trying to come too far off the bottom, but just enough where it kind of pops up, maybe a foot. The reason for that dart head shape is every time it falls back down, it either goes left or right, and it's really erratic. And what's nice about our weedless starter heads is you can throw it in the stuff without having to worry about getting hung up. There we go. This is a good one. Better one. That's what I'm talking about right here. Little fatty. Let that Dobbins Ecstasy 752 do all the work. That's a good one. There's a two pounder. Now we have a starter head. Man. That's what I'm freaking talking about, baby. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We got jig fish, we got spoon fish, we got dart head fish, a little bit of everything, some finesse, some power fishing. Didn't gain topwater fish. I'm sure we could have found that bite and chased it, but you know, when you're catching 40, 50 fish like that, it's, it's hard to shy away from it. Um, but uh, yeah, we caught some good quality on the jig, had a few decent ones on the dart head, had a few okay ones on the spoon. Um, you had to go through so many before you got a quality fish. But uh, that jig, first, that <laughs> was the first or second cast and first fish, boom, over two. So that's a good sign. So we got that Pro-Am TOC coming up for the Wild West for Shasta. So I'll be fishing that and trying to get plenty of time out there. And if you guys would like to support the channel, pick up some jigs from Tackle Warehouse, our local dealers, or directly from our website, BassUnionFishing.com. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and like, subscribe. You know what time it is, go catch some fish.